all this money to throw me out. So I'm wearing the greatest face, man, the downsides of the tux, man, that the damn hell. Like an Arnold Palmer thing, you know, you got the tux up top and then the jeans creased a little bit. The gangster lane, how y'all doing today? Uh, y'all want to tell everybody uh, introducing us, welcoming uh, Dr. Patricia Lee. Are you in the house? Good doctor, is she in the house? Yes, yes, yes. All right, we're going to warm up a little bit. Welcome to the 2022 Jimmy Lossman Legacy Awards. Give us a round of applause. I am your weirdo host for tonight, Brother Ron. And you are in the Jimmy Lossman Jazz Democracy Zone. Zone, 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 zone. <laughs> all right, I gotta have a good sense of humor. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Instead of Earth is spinning faster than usual, so we're probably in another Mercury retrograde that wasn't due to next year. I promise you it's a Mercury retrograde. If y'all know what that is, take a look. It's all online, okay? All right, I gotta have a good sense of humor. I guess this way for Dr. Lee up here. Who in the you know what is Jimmy Lonsford? Why? Why, why him? Why now? Because I have noticed in my 20 plus years of service that a lot of times that the people that care about us, we don't care about them. The folks that take time out of their so-called busy schedules to invest in other people, we kind of leave on the uh, sidelines or the dust or the dustbin of history. James Melvin Lunch was born June 6, 1902, down in Evergreen community, outside of Fulton, Mississippi came from a proud family of land-owning black people. His parents owned almost 80 acres of land. His grandparents was born into slavery on 300 acres of land. And to this day, his family still own a lot of acres of land down in Mississippi, okay? But he wasn't raised down there because black land ownership matters. He wasn't raised down there. He was raised in the rarefied area of Denver, Colorado, where he was taught by none other than Wilberforce White men who was a white man, who was the superintendent of the music education of the Denver Public Schools. He actually believed that blacks and whites should be equally educated in music. 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 Mur, 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 we in Memphis. So, uh, Wilberforce Whiteman's son was uh, Paul Whiteman, who was the king of jazz. He was very commercially successful as a jazz band leader for many decades. He actually commissioned George Gershwin to write uh, Rhapsody in Blue. And, uh, you know, his father taught Jimmy Lonsman, also one of the other great swing band leaders of that era, Andy Kirk, another brother. So Jimmy Lonsman went back down south below the Mason Dixon line to get his education at Fisk University class in 1926. He went up to New York to get further instruction in his educational pursuits and landed back in below the Mason Dixon line down in Manassas High in North Memphis. Back in the 20s, right? Now, Jimmy Love was not hired to be a band director or music educator. He was hired to be the gym coach, the football coach, anything but music. But he majored in social work, and he was very gifted as a musician. He was a, a child prodigy. But he saw uh, music as a way as a rite of passage for young black boys and girls to become responsible, accountable adults. But also he had ambitions to be a world-renowned musician and band leader. So he is actually credited with being the first person in the history of the world to teach jazz studies in a formal educational setting. And he did it at Manassas High. No, no, no! Give it up for Manassas High. No offense, all right? Represent, represent. Okay, so he's very popular dance man called Chickasaw Syncopators. They left Memphis in 1930, took his best high school students and buddies from Fisk University. Among them, Edwin Wilcox, his pianist, and also the great Willie Smith, great alto saxophonist of the era. Within four years of leaving Memphis, he's the house band at the Cotton Club at the Duke Ellington and Cab Colorway. And he becomes the number one attraction at the Apollo Theater for a whole decade. So he was the number one dance band for black people back in the 30s and 40s. Now y'all say, well, Duke and Count is known. Why is Jimmy ain't known if he's the number one dance man for black people? Well, let me get to that point in a few minutes or so, right? Uh, Jimmy Lonsford had one of the greatest show presentations of all time. He put the show in Showtime, right? 
his bed at Tiller May Sushi. I saw that from 1930. That's 1936. And it still goes ham in 2022. Give it up for Jimmy Lunch for 1936. Still going ham in 2022. Right, so Taylor May suits, they were very athletic. Uh, the, the band would dance, sing, tell jokes. Uh, the trumpet section would throw their trumpets up in the air and play where they left off at. In unison, they had so much precision and athleticism, they were known as the trained sales. But they was also known as the Harlem Express because they was the number one dance band for black people back in the 30s and 40s. No other authority than Glenn Miller. If Glenn Miller is Larry Bird, then Jimmy Lunsford is Magic Johnson when it came to band leaders, okay? Take over, look, it's all online. But Glenn Miller said this, he said, but Jimmy had the best of all bands. He said, Duke is great as an elegant, count as a basic, is remarkable, but Lunsford tops them both. Like I told you, there was a reason for that. He had a great show back the Showtime band. But what I really love about Lunsford, he was a pioneer in other ways. He was like an uh, aviation pioneer. He took flying lessons in 1939, brought his first airplane in 1940 for what will be in today's money, almost a million dollars. So this is during the Great Depression. We live in the Great Inflation. Like, this is during the Great Depression. When he was walking around as a black man in America with the type of money to buy airplanes where he find the gigs to. But what I love about him the most is that he was also a philanthropist and humanitarian. When he used to come back to Memphis, we'd do free concerts and musician clinics at the Monash High School in North, North, North Memphis. Right? And one of his uh, admirers was the late, great Emerson Abel Jr., who was a member of the Manassas Rhythm Bombers Band. And, this, and Mr. Emerson Abel was mesmerized by Jimmy Lunsford's tenor sax man, Joe Thomas, who was in that feature film, or feature short, rather. And he became a tenor saxophone man in his own right, one of the greatest music band in the city ever seen, and also the co founder of the Southern Heritage Classic, along with Fred Jones in his living room. We found it in his living room now. Okay, so give put some respect on Mr. Epson Abel Jr. name. He had a, he had a, uh, kick Isaac Hayes out the high school band, but had enough sense to work with him at Stax doing the Isaac Hayes movie. He <laughs> was a wise man, indeed. So God bless his memory. So, why don't we know about Jimmy Lunsford like Duke Elton and Count Basie? Well, you know, Duke and Count lived to be almost 80 years old. So they lived long enough to could receive their flowers. But uh, Duke, I mean, excuse me, Jimmy, we lost him back on July 12th, 1947, up in Seaside, Oregon. Now, you know, Oregon was a state, it became a state in 1859. It had this constitution that blacks could not live, work, or own property there. So black folks didn't start moving to Oregon until like the World War II in the wartime industry. So Jimmy Lunsford had a gig in Seaside, Oregon on the coast. Uh, legend has it, they got into it with the management at a restaurant that refused to serve black people. I don't argue, I love to eat, I don't argue with people that fix my food. You know, I just go away. You know, so, but Jimmy wanted to prove a point. They said, we'll serve y'all. Jimmy and them wanted hamburgers, they had beef sandwiches, and Arby's was an event until 1964. So I don't know what type of beef sandwiches that we eat. I don't know why Arby's is still in business, to be honest with you. I don't know who eat Arby's. But they ate the beef sandwiches. And allegedly, like Jimmy was signing autographs at a music shop nearby the Vivi, the bungalow up in Seaside that still exists as a mall now. I went up there on the 70th anniversary of his death. And it was interesting. They did a story on me. Take a look. It's all online. But uh, he dropped dead, allegedly, either at the hospital or on the way to the hospital or in the racket shop. And his band did not know he was dead until halfway through the show. So allegedly, allegedly, as some of the band members start throwing up and doing ones and twos and combinations in the restaurant. So, um, Dad in 45, the most popular band leader for African Americans in the country, had a big funeral up in New York, like some of the black entertainment league, Samus Davis Jr., Pearl Bailey, all that came out. Then had a funeral where thousands of people came out in Memphis uh, back on July 21st, 1947. And he's buried in Inwood Cemetery. So we're going to get on with the program. What's interesting is that we're honoring uh, Hugh David Whalum tonight. That was Jimmy Lunsford's best friend, the patriarch of the Whalum clan. He actually sunk at Jimmy Lunsford's funeral in Memphis on the way back home, died in a car accident. And to this day, he's buried not too far away from Jimmy Lunsford in Inwood. So, speaking of Jimmy Lunsford, he has been resurrected for this moment. Boys and girls, scholars of dance, jazz, paramedics, and dance, and I can see appreciators of all over this planet of ours, please welcome the one and only James Melvin Lasker.
and I thank you for coming to the Warfield Theater tonight. I am Jimmy Lusser, and I want you to enjoy the show tonight because it's going to be awesome. <laughs> enjoy! I must tell you this. Rhythm is our business, and we're in the business of giving you some rhythm. So, speaking of Jimmy Monster, he has been resurrected for this moment. <laughs> Boys and girls, scholars from Texas, Josh, Brian, Maddox, and Zach's democracy, appreciators of all over this planet of ours, please welcome the one and only James Melvin Monster. Enjoy! I must tell you this. Rhythm is our business. And we're in the business of giving you some rhythm. And in the spirit of Mr. Mustard, it takes what you do, it's the way that you do it. Y'all repeat after me. Take what you do. It's the way that you do it. Take what you do. It's the way that you do it. Take what you do. It's the way that you do it. You got the message? Alright. On show. Let's go. Where's this? Mercury Mercury. Time. Money is time. Can't 
can't waste no time. I got no dimes. I'm broke. Let's go. This is not a joke. I'm just trying to let you know. I don't want to cry. Please don't do me like this. Please, 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 please. What's going on? I don't understand. I'm not a professional. Get they get snacks. They get snacks? No, they're right there. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll, look, this is going to cost me something I don't have. See, I put this on because Memphis is not a broke city. You understand? This is a very powerful city. This is a city where, you know, hmm. This is a city that have benefited from the mis misery of the majority of the people. You, when you are miserable, you are forced to be creative to survive. I'm trying to survive, but I want to cry. There are people that I went to try to put this show on. They got the money, they got the name, they got the connection, but they lack the imagination. They envy me because I dare to dream big things. I dare to go beyond and outside my comfort zone. And I'm trying to figure out why is the lights not on. I fed everybody. <laughs> I don't have no money. I didn't eat. I like to eat. But uh, I think uh, food for thought is very important in these times when people are starving for intellectual curiosity. People are starving for knowledge of self. I don't know what the problem is. All right. All right. Blow it, and they're gonna turn the lights on. So I don't understand what's going on, Chief.
for people in this community. Same thing with Lucy Campbell. Long time educator at Booker T. Washington High School. Taught history and English there. The last of nine children, never knew her father till he died when she was young. Um, I don't want to give up the whole. Please don't. I don't want to go into the whole spiel, but I just think that um, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. You're doing well. I'm trying to figure out why things ain't moving. You're doing well. The silence. It's going to be all right because like, people want to see me fail. That's okay. That's but I'm not doing this for me, so it don't bother me no more. Dr. King didn't come to Memphis for himself. He came to Memphis for us. I'm not doing this for me, I'm doing this for us. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. I know there's people out there, they are getting a good gig off of this, getting a good laugh. I don't understand why things are not moving. We understand. We understand. But somebody might be able to explain it. And it's not for me to come up with the explanation. But we're going to come to a conclusion. You may not like the conclusion. Something's up. Yeah. Oh, right, they went for me to move. I'm the problem now. They always tell me the black man the problem. Okay. By the way. I know the 2022 Jimmy Lunch for Legacy Awards was free for the people, all power to the people. We at the We All Be Group Incorporated still incurred a debt. So we want y'all to help us like we help you all. Help us retire that debt. Help us retire the debt so we can keep on doing this God work that we were sent to do because we all be in it to win it. You can cash out your support, dollar sign R2C2H2. You can Google Pay, PayPal, and zell your support at r2c2h2 at gmail.com that's our email r2c2h2 at gmail.com you can even vmo your support at r2c2h2 that's at r2c2h2 and now you can apple pay your support you could type in my phone number 901-299-4355 that's 901-299 Four three five five, because it takes a village to raise a jazznocracy. Because Jimmy Lunsford matters, Black history matters, and Black music most definitely matters. See how it works somewhere. And let me further add that the We All Be Group Incorporated is a recognized 501c3 nonprofit organization by you know who the IRS. So your donation is tax deductible is tax deductible is tax deductible because celebrating Lunsford is our business and we need your help <laughs>